Okay, today I'm working with a Dell Precision 380 desktop tower with a Intel Pentium 4. And the sticker says, designed for Windows XP, Windows Vista capable. And there's actually a video card inside this tower that I want to put into this Dell Optiplex 780 that is optimized for Windows 7 and has a Intel Core 2 dual processor. Um, first thing we're going to do is see if we can boot to BIOS. And we're going to start with the Dell Precision 380 and see if we can get some extra information and verify that it's a working machine and recognizing all the components. Okay, so little update. After some troubleshooting, I was able to get this Dell uh, Precision 380 working. So we do have access to the BIOS. Uh, previously, it was not turning on. I realized that the uh, power button board down here was tilted to an angle, so I had to take the front cover off so I could properly press the power button with the plastic tab. Uh, that still didn't stop the issue. I was getting an uh, error code, so I tested some of these different cables, plugged them back in. Uh, tried to reset the BIOS by removing the battery, um, but it ended up being the RAM. So I took all the RAM out. As you can see, there's four, one gigabyte DDR2 RAM sticks right there. And I put one two gigabyte stick in. And lo and behold, that's all I needed to do. So let's check out the BIOS. Let's just check out the system specs. All right, so we have some processor info. This is what I wanted to know. So we're dealing with an Intel Pentium 4 CPU at 3.20 gigahertz. It's a pretty impressive clock speed. Uh, dual core, hyper threading, 64 bit, uh, no multiple core though. That's pretty good. So I'm just kind of curious what this uh, PC can handle. Maybe if we max out the RAM as well. Uh, so we're looking at the, I'm wondering about the video card actually. So I'm going to pause the video and find that information really quick. All right. So the BIOS doesn't seem to have any information on the video card, so that's okay. I just went and got the information from the back of the card and was able to find out that it's pretty sweet. Um, it's an Asus EAH5450 silent uh, one gigabyte graphics card with HDMI, DVI, and VGA options. Perfect for all these little small form, fa yeah, small form factor towers that I'm working on. So now that I know that, um, I'm going to take the video card out of this and put it into this Dell Optiplex 780 and see how well it runs because the person... I'm doing this for just wants to have a computer that will stream things like Netflix and then I'll come back and work on this at another time but good to know that it works so I'm going to pause the video again and the next thing you'll see is the Optiplex 780 opened up so good news we have full-on access to the BIOS in the Dell Optiplex 780 I plugged in the video card, it's running well, got the VGA input going with it. Now let's uh, take a look at what we got here. So the thing I'm interested in is uh, mainly the CPU. All right, so we have an Intel Core 2 Duo E7500 at 2.93 gigahertz. Um, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. I think that'll run Windows 10 just well. And paired with this video card, I think it's going to be able to do a wonderful job just streaming Netflix. Um, so I think the next step is to install more RAM. Uh, first, we'll we only have two gigabytes installed right now. 
Uh, my next step is to see if I can back up the contents of this hard drive, which is allegedly failing. And then I will stick a solid state drive in this and upgrade the RAM and we'll see how it runs Windows 10. And this video will continue after that. Okay, so we're now at the point where we're looking to add some upgrades to the Dell Optiplex 780. Um, I thought I may as well film this portion of the video just to showcase how easy it is um, and to let people know that they can do it too. So we're looking to install that video card that I mentioned. the one gigabyte DDR3 ASUS. We already have a two gigabyte stick installed here and we're looking to add another two gigabytes DDR3. So a total of four gigabytes and we'll go from there. Um, I'm going to remove this optical drive and put that out of the way so we have access to the hard drive. Mainly because we have to disconnect the power static cable and add a SATA splitter, just because there's only one available and the other one is already connected to the optical drive. Uh, but we do have another uh, saddle cable, excuse me, a saddle, SATA cable port here on the motherboard. So I'm gonna try plugging a solid state drive into that with this extra SATA cable. So, I think we'll start with the video card and we just have to find the PCI slot right here that it fits right into and all you have to do is line it up hopefully you have a good view and just snap it right in so the whole side here with the brackets the whole thing comes off like that, so we'll be putting that back on a little bit later. Okay, so we got the video card done. Uh, next up, we'll just stick in the RAM stick. As simple as color coding. So we have white, black, white, black. Um, the two gigabyte stick was already in the DIM1 slot, which is the first white slot. We're going to select the next white slot right here and just gently push in until you hear the clicks. So we should have a good four gigabytes of RAM. Now we'll start with the SATA splitter so we can have the second hard drive in. Uh, these are really cool. I've installed these in many machines before and they all work very well and still maintain speed, good speeds. So as you can see here, we just have to plug into our one SATA cable here and now we have the option to plug into this hard drive and this solid state drive which I haven't yet taken out of the package. The one uh, downside though is that these are not 90 degree uh, uh, 90 degree connections. So I think we're okay. I think we'll still be able to um, install this hard drive correctly without crushing a cable. So first I'm going to pull the hard drive out temporarily and I'm going to plug that in. Now we got power and I'm just going to lean it up to the side here like that. We'll finish plugging everything in when we're done, just to, and once we verify that everything works. So I'm going to get another Toshiba 128 gigabyte solid state drive out of the package here. And just like a lot of the drives that I purchase, or solid state drives, at least this is a refurbished drive. And I've had very good luck with these especially when they come in uh, lots of five or 10 or more and from a reputable seller. So we'll get this, the next SATA power cable plugged in 
and we'll take this SATA cable out of the package. SATA cables and SATA splitters can be found online and eBay for pretty cheap. And I can leave a couple links in the description below. You don't have to spend a lot of money on these, but you do have to wait for them to be delivered. As I live in Canada and generally I order these types of cables from China because they're cheap and offer free shipping. Sometimes you have to wait up to up to a month. Uh, sometimes they come in a week too, though it's, a, it's kind of a gamble, but you just have to be patient and you'll save a lot of money. All right, so we have the solid state drive plugged in. I mainly care to see if this SATA port in the middle of the hard drive or uh, middle of the motherboard will work. As you can see, it's distance away from the other two SATA connections, so I wonder if it's for a different purpose, but we're going to find out. So that was easy enough. I think that took less than a few minutes. I'm going to pause the video, reposition the camera so we can watch the screen, and we're going to see if we can boot this into BIOS. Alright, so I have a VGA cable attached to the graphics card, and we're going to give this a go. Oh, of course, I always forget to plug the power cable back in. Alright, we go. All right, moment of truth. Okay, it's booting, perfect. Now let's enter setup and just make sure that the motherboard is detecting everything. So we'll scroll down here. So I opened the uh, boot device menu and that'll later allow me to uh, choose a boot device so I can load up Windows 10. But for now, we're just gonna enter system setup and I already see that we have ST3250318AS and I believe that is um, that is the hard drive, our Seagate hard drive. So a solid state drive is not coming up yet, but that's okay, hope is not lost. Let's enter BIOS and see if we can figure this out. Sometimes you have to initialize a drive. So let's go into general, click system board, and we have our, our RAM is recognized. So that's good. Uh, obviously the video card works because we have a display. And let's go into drives. So let's go to SATA operation and Go down to drives. Here we go. So we have, this is pretty common with this uh, series of Dell Optiplex PC towers and this uh, version of BIOS that they run on. If your hard drive or solid state drive or whatever drive is not being recognized, it's not booting, um, you just have to go into BIOS and initialize it. And it's quite easy here. You just have to go to drives go down to drives again and click that box SATA2. You just have to look at your motherboard and make sure that you're initializing the right SATA port. And of course, in this case, it's the only one left over, so it has to be the right one. And as I look on the motherboard here, it does say SATA2. So we have that clicked and we'll hit apply. And, uh, Yeah, let's do it. Let's hit exit and we're going to hit F12 for boot options again. Okay, perfect. So now we can see that we have the hard drive, the CD-ROM drive, also known as the optical drive, and we have the solid state drive showing up. So. We're good to go. I'm going to hold down the power button, shut this down, 
grab my USB stick with Windows 10 and we're gonna get started so this machine this tower I will partially show you very quickly as you can see here we have our Windows 7 product key so we're all set up okay we are into Windows now that's awesome so it looks like everything's running okay uh, the only thing left for me to do is run Windows Update and uh, just, you know, run a few YouTube videos, let the device or tower run for a little while. And as long as everything works well, we are doing great. So we'll just go into task manager here, check out that dual core CPU. It's all good. Our memory is being recognized. All the drives are there. This hard drive is looking pretty good. Um, yeah, I think I'll pause the video at this point and finish up with um, how I decide to put this tower back together. And then we'll end with that.